the uh, sort of outline of what we're going to talk about. We'll talk about the AIC seismic provisions themselves and sort of mold them in with the methodology um, so that it, it kind of combines the sort of why of, of what's in there with the requirements that we're going over. Uh, talk about uh, what one of those methods, which is protecting critical locations. And then after that, we'll take a break. And, and that first section will cover basically everything that applies to all the moment frame systems. We'll come back and look specifically at special moment frames. Um, and for the, for the most part, really spend the time on special moment frames. And then look a little bit at intermediate moment frames, uh, which, which has very similar requirements, uh, just lessened uh, a bit here and there. Uh, we'll also talk about in that second section the pre-qualified connections documents from AISC. Uh, and then after our second break, we'll come back and do a step-by-step -step example for a reduced beam section connection that will illustrate the uh, items we're talking about in the first sessions. So we'll be um, slightly different, perhaps, timing. I'm probably going to do to uh, go a little quicker in the first two sessions so that we have time left over to go through the example in detail. Let me start before we get into the AISC documents themselves, uh, just by note, noting that we'll be talking about the 2010 versions of the AISC documents, uh, the AISC specification, which applies to all structural steel buildings. Uh, the number for that is the AISC 360-10, a dash 10 being the year. And the AISC 341, which is the number for the seismic provisions. And lastly, it's not uh, highlighted necessarily on this slide, but the pre-qualified connection document is called, uh, or the number is AISC 358. And I do tend to use those um, numbers on the slides because it's a more condensed form for, for referencing what we're looking at exactly. Uh, but the specification is 360. The seismic provisions is 341, and the pre-qualified connections is 358. And the 2010 versions of, of the AISC documents are referenced in the 2012 IBC and ASCE 710, and, and the versions uh, 2015 IBC uh, as well. But, but uh, in the building codes uh, come the loads, uh, the load combinations, uh, some system requirements, you know, the use of amplified seismic load combinations, et cetera, and also provides the, the, um, where you can use this, the different types of seismic force resisting systems. Today we are talking about the moment frame systems here. So we'll sort of zero in on those a little bit. Um, we'll talk about special steel moment frames for the most part. Uh, we won't really cover special steel, special uh, truss moment frames or ordinary frames, but we will look at intermediate moment frames as well. There's a few things of, of interest to point out here as we go forward. The response modification factor R, which is you know sort of a, a measure of the ductility of the system, uh, in, in, to put it in simple terms, uh, is eight for special moment frames, and it goes all the way down to four and a half for intermediate moment frames. So at some point, you're, one of the first things you're going to do is decide what kind of steel system you need to use. Um, the R equals eight system for special moment frames is not limited in height or, or really f in any other way for the seismic design categories B all the way through F. Whereas uh, steel intermediate moment frames are limited uh, they're not limited in seismic design categories B or C, but when you get to D, it is limited to 35 feet and is shown as not permitted in the table. However, uh, there are footnotes and, and uh, if there's anything that's a, a consistent item in st structural engineering codes is footnotes to tables. Uh, but this footnote H basically indicates that for a steel intermediate moment frame, you can actually go up to 65 feet if you have a single story building for all three of those, as long as your roof loads are, are low. And the, the details for what those are uh, are in section 12.2.5.7 of ASCE 710. We're not really gonna get into that detail uh, here, but uh, there are, even though it's indicated is not permitted on the table that I've reproduced here, uh, you can actually go up to 65 feet 
uh, for a single story building or 35 feet for multi-story buildings uh, in E and F as well. Again, for light uh, light frame systems uh, where you're keeping your, your loads low, keeping your loads down.